What's digging? I've got an iPhone X here that's stuck on the Apple logo. We're gonna try and sort it out. Hopefully we're going for a full repair, if not at minimum a data recovery. While I have this one plugged into the amp meter, it's only drawing 500 milliamp. It's severely under. It should be drawing a minimum of one amp at five volt. And it's right now sitting at 100 milliamp and hung at the Apple logo. 100 milliamp's not good. When we have it plugged into power, it just sits there. It doesn't get any further than the Apple logo. So without further ado, let's crack this one open and see what's going on the inside. Before I do though, I've got three suspicions what it could be straight away being an iPhone X. It could have a bad battery. It could have a water damage or otherwise bad charger dock, or it could have a water damage earpiece. So essentially what is really common with these is a bit of moisture gets into the earpiece here, falls down the flex cable, corrodes a bit, on the inside and then it stops it from booting. Rather than just guessing though, let's just crack into it and see what we can do about it. Uh, as always, we've just got to take out these screws that are holding in that FPC cover so we can get access to the screen, the battery and the front facing flex and disconnect all of those. What I've actually done there is just leave the screen connected, disconnected the battery while I'm pulling things apart and I've also disconnected that front facing flex. With the speaker flex disconnected and we try and turn it on, it's telling us that it has no battery. What do you know? That speaker flex is connected. We've now got a working and chargeable phone. Now that we know that there's not an issue with this part of the phone, let's take off this front facing speaker and inspect this flex cable and see what's going on. We've only got these three screws that are holding in this speaker assembly. Those three screws removed, we can just pop this speaker back like this, fold it out of the way, and then we can just pinch that one. That's your ambient light sensor. Detects the light that's around the phone to change your brightness. And then, then we can take this tool here, lift up that little gold thing, which is a microphone, and then slide it across the other way very carefully. We don't want to damage it. And that is your flood illuminator. Now that we've got this bit removed and outside of the screen, we can actually have a bit of a closer look. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, what can happen is a bit of moisture gets in between that ear mesh. This is then sitting on the other side and it hits along here and corrodes inside here. So if you can picture it, this is how it sits on the screen. This part flips back. So you're looking at the ear mesh being just on, on this other side here. Surprise, surprise. We've got a bunch of corrosion just underneath the flood illuminator. So the yeah, tricky thing is, so because the flood illuminator is all corroded there, and we've got a working phone. There's two things that can go down here. We can just replace this whole thing with an aftermarket one, and then essentially the customer loses face ID, or we can attempt to repair this one. So the ambient light sensor and the flood illuminator are paired to the phone's face ID. So without those, unfortunately, we won't end up with face ID. So let's try and fix this one first. But worst case scenario, the customer loses face ID. So for this one, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of flux underneath the flood illuminator here, just like that. We don't wanna get it on top there and seep into these um, sensitive components. We just want the flux between the flex cable and the flood illuminator, just a tiny bit, not too much. Next up, we're using about 245 degrees at 25 liters a minute so nothing too crazy and we're just going to zap it with a bit of hot air and essentially what i'm trying to do is just reflow those connections underneath that flood illuminator to the flex to get rid of that corrosion and hopefully fix the issue and restore face id at the same time on steady wins the race on this one you can't rush it at all there's been plenty of times where um you just melt everything these are plastic so you can't use too much of an intense heat on it. it. just needs to be really nice and slow. I've just get forward up to this point because it takes a while to get up to the heat that it needs to. But essentially what I'm looking for is the flood illuminator here. You'll see in a moment. I can move it ever so slightly, which means it's right now the solder is liquidous. So with that one done, We then just let it cool down, hang here for a bit. You'll see now on those angles, all that corrosion that was there before has now been cleaned up. We're now gonna put this bit back into the screen, connect it all back together and see if we've got a working phone with Face ID. With the speaker flex and that screen back together after reflowing that flood illuminator, we're getting a healthy draw of power. We've now got a booting phone after reflowing that flood illuminator. Next step is just to test everything, make sure it's all working, and see if Face ID is working. We've got Face ID. 
this one's a win-win. The customer doesn't have to shell out for a new screen. There's no catastrophic failure. They've got access to data and face ID is all working. It's about the best result you could possibly have. All I've got to do is test everything else, put it all back together, and that's it. All in a day's work, mate. I hope you guys like this shorter video rather than the longer one that I posted yesterday. Let me know what you guys think of these. Drop a comment, smash that like button, all that YouTube stuff. Subscribe, share with your friends. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much.